honored by your visit, Your Excellency, and the attention is bring to, to the urgent need to accelerate the implement, implementation of Shark Dwell Federation of Namibia initiative in Havana Ituani Group. Our community, with its large population of 600,000 above, has been a significant member of people living in former settlement. Your presence here today is a beacon of hope and a testament to our shared commitment to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. With uh, due respect, uh, Miss Anna Maren, Edith Mbango, Inga Boys, Inga Bo Boye, uh, thank you very much that you are here with us today. We really appreciate you. And I want to urge with this uh, that this house, they are really in order. But there is other group in Moses Garwood, let me just say to mention Habitatu, you leave them in a desert. We wanted you to solve this problem. We, we have people that they don't have water, but it's, it's under you. We, we have people that they don't have electricity where they are every day crying. We are, we are really urging to you. Please solve this problem. As we are here celebrate, we need our people, uh, their problem be solved very well. Thank you very much. For any development to be sustainable, it should be done with the people and for the people. And your visit here, especially to the initiatives that are being undertaken by the community themselves through the Shark Dwellers Federation of Namibia and the Namibia Housing, you know, Housing Action Group, is very significant to us. And then there is a SDG 17, which talks about partnerships. We as a government have uh, believed that the, this, the development of our communities, whether it's in terms of housing and also the, you know, the, uh, the general development, need to involve the communities. So what we have been doing and continue to do is that we have formed a, a very close partnership with communities, organized groups, and you have the likes of the Shark Dwellers Federation of Namibia and the Tohangana Fund and the Namibia Housing Action Group uh, who, who are not only coming to government for handouts or for, or, or for support, but they are actually mobilizing their own, their own resources. So they have a group savings and we as a government then come in and complement that to help them to be able to, to provide tenure security for their members, to provide basic services to their members and ending up also with decent shelter, very affordable shelter as, uh, as you will be given more details. Uh, the houses, as you see, most of these structures here, they were started as simple, very simple, basic structures, but people have over time incrementally added onto them. So as a government, we, we, we remain uh, committed to work with our communities uh, to be able to bring uh, services to them, and especially working with a group such as the Federation. Um, we have a number of initiatives that are in place and we have anchored those uh, through a new policy on housing which emphasizes the upgrading of informal settlements. This is one of those areas that we are busy with upgrading. Um, and also we are looking at also greenfield development areas. And we have also, we believe that uh, as the saying goes, you cannot, if you cannot measure it, you cannot manage it. So, in the, so it is also very important for us to know what we are managing and, the, develop and the, the problem that we are dealing with and the extent of that problem. So we have formed partnerships 
with uh, the Namibia Statistics Agency to be able to collect real-time data on, on the whole you know, spatial development in the country. So welcome once again, and uh, we, are, we continue to rely on our partners, such as the UN, uh, to help us to deal with the problem that you are seeing here. This is, this is the problem that we are dealing with. Um, I know the, our late president has always been uh, talking about um, the classification of Namibia as an upper-middle income country, uh, which then you know, creates a problem for us to, to access a concessional funding you know, as it is available to the least developed countries. But I'm sure when you look at these type of challenges here, you will be able to help and join us in pushing our case for us to be getting you know, concessional funding and other type of assistance that can really help to boost our development endeavors. What is this Czech Bureau Federation all about? It's a network of the low, ultra low communities that organizing themselves around saving to improve their living condition. We start with the small savings, put aside a 10 cent, a 5 cent, the money that we have, we have that for the day and for the week, for you to make sure you prepare the future of yourself and your children. The Federation in Namibia started in 1998, <laughs> though before there was also savings room that were operating on their own. When they established the Federation, then they linked together with the, with the Network Sectoral Federation. We have, we have already 1,046 savings groups countrywide, and the amount of saving that is over 30 million countrywide. Though I'm talking about the savings that groups that are there, 1,046, but all these groups are operating on their own. They have got their own bank account, they are managing their own funds, they could do their own bookkeeping, and coming together on a weekly basis and make sure that this money that was collected is in the bank. We are doing the auditing ourselves because we cannot pay the, the auditors. We cannot afford that. But we are doing our auditing self. The groups are changing, exchanging the group, the, the savings group, and check the other one, you check the other one with the bank statement so that we know exactly that the money that was saved is being kept in the bank. <coughs> so far, we, we, we have already been uh, uh, the more than 8,000 houses through the community participating processes. Because the members themselves, as they are doing, they are doing this incremental development. They start small, E.J. already explained, we start small to build these houses with a small 34 square meter house, and then saving and saving and saving and extend the houses. If you find some bigger houses here, that always it is being done through the community process, particular processes. So we are, Dealing with the land issues, negotiate with our municipality to get the land, and then we sort of avail the land, and then we start with the, with the construction of houses, also put some services. The services, we are putting our services, service ourselves as a community, because to get someone to put services, of the, the municipality to put services, it becomes too expensive, we cannot afford that. But put the service ourselves, we buy the pipes, we dig the trenches, we get a semi-skilled person that can help us and assist and show how to do it, and then with inspection from the uh, local authorities. It's whereby we have got uh, people today that have got services in their, in their areas. We have got also tackled the informal settlement upgrading, whereby we're working with more than uh, 25, uh, uh, in more than 25 towns, to, to, to train the people to do their own services. And they, so before they start the, the, the building of the houses. We are working in partnership with our government, as Idia mentioned here today. They are really, they are the ones that are taking care of us, making sure we have got funds to build the houses. We have got also some private sectors 
but also supporting the process that also also contributing towards the Tongana Fund. The man that is coming to us from the government, from the private sector, is coming to the Tongana Fund. The Tongana Fund is a fund that was established by the community themselves and said the money has gone through that account and you are paid the money there. And the, the, lucky enough, the money that we are getting from the government is not a loan, it's just a grant. Whoever us as a federation, we decided not to give this, the money to the individuals because it won't help. We not, it, it won't serve the purpose. So we are just giving the loans to the members, they pay it back to the, to the, to the, to the account for, with, with a small interest so that money can revolve. So far, we already have received more than 100 million from the government. Hala government of Hala government of Hala We are proud of the government of Namibia. We are proud of that. They are still continuing. There's always still room for them to contribute towards the Tonga Fund. They see the work that we are doing as a federation. So we are proud of that. So the, the, we were always taking a part with the uh, UN conferences as a federation. And we already traveled with a ticket from the government. Alala, government, alala. They will pay for our ticket. They like, will never travel alone. They will take one from the community and travel with them so that we are sure that these are companies that we are working with as a government of Namibia. So we are proud of that. So, uh, so, so far, uh, we really uh, appreciate that we are doing, the government is doing and also applaud that the community are willing to do things for themselves, not to wait for the things coming from heaven. We call these people sitting here, you cannot wait for things coming from heaven. Because uh, uh, today I'm, 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 I'm here, I never saw something come from heaven. That's why we have to work hard for us to benefit, to, do, to show people that no, we are not there to wait, that the government is not there for, for, for to just give, 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 give. We are there to participate. The previous speaker, as humble as she is, was also a recipient of the UN Habitat Scroll of Honor. And she is still doing the work after 12 years. To Mama Edith. Alala, Mama Edith, alala. Alala. And next to me is a very brave lady. This project had very big stumble blocks, Mama Inga. I, we sit here and we talk about solutions for land that was taken back because of defaults and because of people not having PO boxes. Can you believe? But we got the land back and after all this struggle for more than 14 years today, we go, she's going to tell us the story about what is what they have achieved. We get land from the city of Windu. Then we get the contract of five years to pay off the land. Due to challenge and misunderstanding of the community, some of the community failed to pay our rate and tax. So the contract canceled in the year 2007. We did not give up even the contract cancer. We discussed with our Shed Dweller Federation Information Center, our support NGO Namibia Housing Action Group, so that we can get a second chance to from the city of Windu. 2013, we get the second chance from city of Windu. From 2013, Due to standard change, requirement from the city change, so the city of Windu discussed with us to consolidate and change our group layout. So we agree, and here today we are standing and proud of the owner of the houses. So we constructed our houses during difficult time, during COVID-19. And it went well. We constructed 17 houses. The fund from the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development, and we are very appreciate for what they have done to us. And we as a shed dwellers and E27 group and Havana at large, we are very proud to say we are we are meeting the government the halfway to reach the 
some of the sustainable goals. For example, goal number six, clean water and sanitation. Goal number seven, affordable and clean energy. Number 11, sustainable city and community. And number 13, climate action. By construction of low cost houses for low income householders for the community to participate in servicing their land and community to participate on the planning studio to plan their informal settlement when it comes to the informal settlement upgrading. We also educate and make awareness for the, our community to use solar for those who does not have electricity. And we also educate our community to start backyard garden. We don't want the, the time of the rain season the, to waste the water to run all. So we harvest water even at our group. We put our gut so that we can use the, the water to watering our garden, using them whatever we want to use. And together we can make it. That you're doing every day and have been doing, and have been doing for several years to look after this community and to give it definition and the pride that I see in your faces in being able to do something that in many, many parts of the world, many people have not been able to achieve which is to provide shelter for themselves and their families. Shelter is more than a house. It's a home. It's what keeps the family together and what helps to build strong, enduring, resilient communities. When it does not exist, things go radically wrong. But when it exists, it creates new powers, new possibilities that add to the success of the entire community. These things do not happen by magic. They don't. It's it's you, the people, working in conjunction with the local authorities, your representatives, that give life and meaning to these projects. I noted that our friend over here has been working hard, along with others, on making this project a reality for many, many years. This is not easy work, and it is not something that happens overnight. You have to have the ambition, you have to have the determination, you have to determine and decide you're not accepting no for an answer. Because if you can think it, you can make it happen. You just need to go and search for the right button to push. The buttons are there. You need to find the buttons to give you the responses that you need to make it happen. So I think you are rightly, you deserve the respect the support, the appreciation of the wider community for what you've been able to achieve. Housing is not an easy uh, thing to achieve. Shelter is extremely important in life. That is why it's on the SDGs, because in many, many parts of the world, people lack shelter. 
That's why we have so many street dwellers. Even in the largest, <coughs> richest countries in the world. I live in New York. Sometimes you walk on the sidewalks and you have to be careful where you put your foot because you might be walking on somebody sleeping there. Hmm? So this is not a problem for poor countries. This is a problem for all countries. And really, the trick is how countries deal with it, how communities deal with it. It's really magical how this community has been empowered, empowered itself to determine we can do something about this to meet our own needs. You don't need the government to tell you that. That's something that you can determine. And then seek the support and the engagement and help of the government and the local authorities to get it done. But it takes hard work. And I'm very glad to see that there are several generations represented here. Because this kind of work needs to pass on from one generation to the next. In 10 or 12 or 15 years, those who are coming behind, may, because they were not around at the time, they don't know the work that went into making this happen. But you need to tell them so that they understand that this was not a gift. This is hard work, heavy lifting, sacrifice, persistence, and uh, perhaps some good luck as well. You know, the scriptures say, God helps those who helps themselves. We all have the power to do it. You are much stronger than you think you are. When you face the challenge, that's when you discover, I can do this. So I want to thank you all and to encourage you. And the one thing that I would suggest, if you have a chance, share your experience right here in Namibia with other communities. Just share, just go and talk with them. Let them too, un because you are now an example. You, are, you created, a, you blazed the trail. You demonstrated to others what is possible when communities stick together, work together. In my country, we have a saying. And its origins are with the native people that Christopher Columbus found when he arrived in the Caribbean in the year 1492. There was a growing healthy civilization there of native peoples. So what they told us in the history books the Europeans, that Christopher Columbus discovered the Caribbean. Not true. There was an old civilization there, thousands of years old, very sophisticated. And those people, the Caribs and the Arawaks, had a word called Gayap, G-A-Y-A-P. And you know what Gayap is? Gayap is what you have done. Gayap translated into modern language means many hands make light work. When you do it together, it becomes easier, much easier. So, you have joined hands. You join hands with the local authorities, with your representatives, with your neighbors, with each other with pride to demonstrate again, yet again what is achievable when we work together 
in solidarity and help and support each other. There are some things in life that money cannot buy. Money can't buy. And that's one of them. People caring and sharing and lifting each other up to make things better for all. And so with that, you've done it for all these years. But I think this is, for me, seeing it live and in action, it's very important for me and those who sit like me in a faraway place where we are talking about providing human beings with a better standard of living and with hope that tomorrow their lives will improve. I'd like to invite all of us to stand and join hands again today <coughs> to symbolize what you have so successfully done with great pride and effort to take care of your own community. You have the power. You have created something here that is magical and that needs to be shared with other communities in, in, uh, in Namibia and certainly through me with other communities in the world. Thank you so very much. I am so proud of what you've been able to achieve. So please, can we stand and join hands? That must be an omen. Yes. <laughs> huh? We're joining hands in human solidarity to demonstrate the power that working together in community and humility, how great the result is in solving our own problems. Thank you so very much. Your Excellency, thank you very much for having visited this area, which I would refer to this is where people live. When I welcome you there, I said welcome to Commerce Region and to the city of Windhoek, the city of many faces. My interpretation was that where you are coming from is different from where we are. And this is the reality on the ground. Thank you very much for having made time to come to the people and hear from themselves. Check dwellers, give yourself a hand of applause. <laughs> Your Excellency, you have also visited an area where you now can convince yourself and understand what the government of Namibia is doing in terms of providing shelter to its people. Now, one of the issues that we found ourselves as a region, this is where the capital city is, and we only have Windhoek as the capital city in the Republic, but we have 14 regions in this country, so we are one of those 14 regions. Commerce region is overpopulated. Why? Because we are challenged with urban migration. Everybody is flocking to commerce region for very good reason, for greener pasture, for better lives, and for everything what, which they believe is better. And everybody is moving from the other 13 regions to the center of commerce region. Hence, we have the problem that we have of informal settlement. But you could have seen and understood we are addressing this issue. We are out to address the issue of informal settlement. I was there discussing with my ED. I said, Comrade ED, you know what? We may not be able to address completely <coughs> so the issue of informal settlement. But we are on the right path to do so. Having said that, let me also um, recognize the Sheikh Dwellers Association. 
without Sheikh Dwellers assistance, we could have not done what we have done. So we are indebted to you, the leadership and the beneficiaries. We are proud of you. Continue doing what you do and what you know best. You have heard it from him. What you do, you provide shelter. And one understanding because of exposure, Your Excellency, is that in Namibia we seem to understand and convince ourselves it's only us on Mother Earth that has informal settlement. Mm -hmm. In other areas it's even worse, mm -hmm. to say the least. But mm -hmm. we are doing our best. Let me also appreciate the Ministry of uh, International Relations and Cooperation for having included this in your program during the visit of His Excellency to the Republic of Namibia. Thank you very much. Job well done. And uh, why would I leave the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development for, of course, funding the Sheikh Dwellers Association? And we had it for ourselves. <laughs> she said over 100 million have been given to them, and they are managing this fund, and they are accountable for using these funds. Well done, Ministry. All we request and expect from you is to continue doing the good work. Continue funding the Sheikh Dwellers Association. Let me also thank um, the presence of our coordinator from the Mighty Swapo Party and everybody that decided to attend this event this morning. And um, I want us to really appreciate that there are houses standing here, and these houses are as a result of our Czech dwellers. But then we'll tour them and see them. Uh, otherwise, um, what would I have not said? I have seen the tent over there. It's here. I have done my part, I have registered. The intention is come 27 November 2024, we are going for election, presidential and national assembly election. And we are not just saying people must register to go and vote. We are saying that is your democratic right, is your voice. Please go and register. Don't wait for the last minute. Having said that, Your Excellency, you are more than welcome. You are part of some of us. You are us. Nothing less, nothing more. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day. Happy to see you today as we say thank you. Our visitors. Welcome, 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 welcome to Havana. Welcome, 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 welcome to Havana.
My name is Martin Kaonzo. I work for the Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation. It gives me a great honor and privilege to be the director of proceedings for the engagement between the President of the General Assembly and the Shape Bearers Federation, which is going to focus on the community-based urban housing solution in preparation of the summit of the future. Uh, without uh, <coughs> wasting much of your time, uh, it is actually very important if we can go through uh, the program before you so that we 